Hey, MJ traders and investors, welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth. It is Friday. It is a MJ Sector check-in video, and it is the 29th of January. It's the last day, trading day of the month. So we're going to discuss as our main topic in today's video, CXXI as our main stock of the day. And it led the, it was up with TAUG and CNBCI, so BioHarvest leading the bull list. So we'll look at some charting on that and the overall Canadian and US cannabis sector. I don't know about you guys, but I'm super happy it's Friday. It's been a long week. So we'll run through some news and events here on the cannabis space and then we'll jump into CXXI and the overall broader market in the US and the Canadian MJ space. So before we jump into the content, make sure to smash the like and subscribe to the channel. Leave me a comment below if you would like a ticker covered or where you think we're heading into next week in both Canadian and USMJ. So Sundial Growers announces 100 million registered offering and this comes after the stock was up over 100% yesterday. Again, I've reiterated this time and time again, when we know companies are struggling financially or they're in need of cash or they have debt, then when their stock runs 50 or 100%, you need to be on the lookout for potential raises. This shouldn't come as a surprise. Some of the larger cannabis companies are about to report quarterly financials. So we have a ton of companies coming up. We've got Aurora Cannabis, Canopy Growth, Liberty Health Sciences, Balance Company, to name a few. So obviously Canopy is going to be the big one there. And that one's going to be in a couple of weeks. So eyes, all eyes will be on that. So taking a look at CXXI here, on the monthly time frame, you can see that we had a mini higher low down here at 68. It confirmed a monthly bull flag. And now we are above EMA 12 and 26 on the monthly. We could be setting up for a bull cross here as well. So monthly, a little bit of an indecision candle there. So we'll zoom into the weekly chart on CXXI. So weekly could be a potential, it's pulled back a little bit more than we would like to see. So if we just do a quick and bear with me here, guys, I'm still recuperating from a broken hand. So we did retrace about 0.5, so the 50% retracement. So we wouldn't consider that a weekly bull flag at this point. But if we did ignore the wicks, it is holding EMA 12 and may have just been brought down by the weakness in SPY and the overall broader market. So we'll see if that weekly bull flag can play out. We need to change the daily trends back to an uptrend to be confident that the weekly high or low is set. So if we come out and say we set a higher low compared to the most important daily support at 135, if we pull back to say 145 or 140 on Monday, and then we break to a higher high and we break resistance at 165, the high of today, that would confirm a daily uptrend and weekly higher lows are likely set. So then we would zoom out to the weekly and we would look at resistance up at $2.06. If we break 206, then that will confirm that weekly bull flag. Again, I'm going to ignore those wicks just because of the weakness in SPY today. I really don't think it was attributed to weakness in, because we saw the whole sector be drugged down as well, even Canadian MJ. So like I said, daily downtrend, need to change that to be confident the weekly higher lows are set. If we look at the hourly time frame, we are in an hourly uptrend so the daily higher lows are set and we'll look to resistance like i said at 165 going into monday but on the weekly we did close with a lower wick and on the monthly we had increasing bull volume here and like i said a little bit of an indecision we had the monthly ema 12 and 26 look lining up as a bear cross holding ema 12 on the weekly and on the daily time frame we did have a bear cross of the EMA 12 and 26, which was the first time since all the way back here in October as well. So taking a look at the weekly time frame, we held above the 10 week moving average was at $1.57, we closed at $1.60. The stochastic is bearish and the MACD was curling, but it has yet to cross bearish. But that is definitely a little bit of a red flag there with stochastic already trending down but not completely out of the water yet and not completely underwater yet, sorry. And weekly, you can see here, we could be seeing a potential 50, 100 and 200 weekly moving average cross, which would be very bullish if that were to play out. Taking a look at the daily moving averages, you can see here we were 
down below the 50 day moving average and we are trying to save it here and we confirmed we even touched down on it today and confirmed support and closed near closer to the high of the day than the low of the day so we'll consider that a save for the moment and taking a look at the VWAP you can see here that on the day on the weekly we bounced off the weekly VWAP we lost it looks like we went stop hunting but essentially bulls bought the dip and it's holding up in general overall pretty well so that was it for the bull list today. On the bear list in the U.S. sector, we had Ian, MJNA, and GRWG and NBEV. So taking a look at BAM, BAM was up to 95 cents today. Hit the high of 95 cents. And that was from my entry back at 79 cents yesterday. Still swinging that position. Still swinging some MSOS. And that's it for USMJ. I'll be potentially scouting a position in CXXI to begin the week next week. But you can see here we have an equilibrium with a high, low, lower, high, high, or low. Most important support is going to be 79. Most important resistance, 95 and 98 going into next week. So we'll just take a look at Cura. Cura down over 1% today. And we could see a potential EMA 12 and 26 bear cross as well. GTI was up over 3%. Not, it's fending off those bear crosses. So the more names that regain their EMAs, the better. But the more that we start to see trending down, the more we could see potential sector consolidation. And truly, as an inside bar, we'll be watching that on Monday, but holding EMA 26. So MSOS rejecting at EMA 12, but basically sandwiched right in between there on 26 EMA, trying to form a base of support there. And that would be the first time, if we do lose it, that'd be the first time we actually close above it, close below it, sorry. And that's the first time since all the way back here, pretty much inception since we've crossed above it. So can the bulls save this and break to new highs or are we going to break below the 4033 support and see more daily and weekly consolidation. Next week is going to be very telling. Obviously we are consolidating on the weekly. We do have EMA 12 down there as well on watch. And on the monthly, we did have an, a huge upper wick, but we have tons of volume, no real red flags just yet. That's for pretty much where we stand in terms of USMJ. We'll scoot over here to Canadian MJ. So taking a look at CGC, we did have the EMA 12 crossing through 26 on the monthly. So that's the first time that's happened since the all time highs. We're well above, very, very bullish close here on the monthly. We don't have any resistance up to $52. And I remember telling people back here when we, we changed the monthly trend, I said, don't be afraid to buy daily dips or or dips when we're still in a daily and a monthly and a weekly uptrend, the first time that's happened since all time highs with no resistance on the monthly up to $52. Now you're starting to understand why I was so bullish on Canadian MJ. So again, February 9th is the earnings. So that'll be a huge catalyst for the sector. Could potentially see some weak numbers. Again, there's Nova Cannabis boycotting Canopy in, in, uh, in Alberta and could be potentially seeing some impairment and write downs from the stockpile in Canadian cannabis across the country. So we'll see, but obviously tr the chart has nothing to say, but positive bullish signs. You can see that we're in a daily uptrend as well, holding EMA 12, EMA 12 on the daily time frame is going to be extremely important. And the hourly uptrend, if we can con confirm, if we can resume this hourly uptrend and avoid an hourly downtrend, then the daily move is still is still going and we can expect more highs into next week but very very bullish saw some weakness there into the afternoon with spy and we had tons of volume there to begin after the close yesterday we had tons of volume today as well to begin the morning but then we just faded with spy and ultimately closed red on the day so down about 0.64%. Let's take a look at the bear list. 
So we had NSP, N, APHA, ACB, OGI leading the decline. On the bull list, we had PCLO, PWR, Labs, and RIV. So we need to lose hourly uptrends on most of these names. And just taking a look at some other tickers here. So ACB, Aurora, closed down almost 5% today. Daily consolidation underway, EMA 12 right there. So we'll see if that holds. It's been holding on most names, APHA, daily consolidation, holding EMA 12. So that'll be notable. EMA 12 is going to be very important for most names in the Canadian MJ space. Tron holding as well. Hexo holding. SNDL after the raise today, daily inside bar, not expensive. Not surprising after the huge range day we had yesterday, but that inside bar will be on watch. We break it bearish, we'll be looking to lows. If we break it bullish, then we'll be looking to the highs. TLRY, but we did hold EMA 12 in the daily, TLRY holding EMA 12. So that's the story going into next week. Hourly uptrends are key and daily EMA 12s as a nice visual guide. Hope everyone has a great weekend. Thanks again for joining us on the pursuit of wealth for a marijuana sector check-in. Take care, have a great weekend. Make sure you get lots of rest and come back strong, ready to go next week. Let's get.